I think I'm just going to do the um, Anim Blueprint thing today. I guess I should just get to it. Let's just do it. So in your character here, um, obviously replace the mesh, the skeletal mesh. Well, I guess if you're starting from scratch, even though don't do that, just start with a third person or top down or first person. But if you were to start from scratch, you do blueprint, blueprint class character. The character is going to come with a pawn or a mesh kind of a thing. So that's the, the human in which you want to use. That's this. Um, replace it with whoever you have, or just keep theirs in for now. They have a lot of stuff on Mixamo. Use those for now if you have to. Um, they gave you a lot of free stuff here. Epic did. So mine is Z Zombie Mesh. So with it selected, I can either push the arrow. I can grab and drag. I can click that and just find it. Either way, any of them work. If you don't have any meshes, if you don't have any meshes, um, just go to the marketplace. Put in mix some mo. Right here, take the animation pack, and you will have a bunch of meshes with animations. So you can follow along with this on a walking animation or a running animation, which is basically what we're going to do just to set up a. So you just click this free button, and then you'll add it to your your project. Um, but yeah, so put in that. And then right here, use animation blueprint. And right now we have none. C player. Oh, maybe we do. But we'll create one. Because it's a top down player, anyways, and that's not what we want. So off of the Z skeletal mesh, create animation blueprint. So I keep all mine in a separate folder. curiosity what this is. Yeah, okay, so this is for that skeleton. I'll be working out for this one. Alright, well first and foremost we want our character to move when they walk forward. As you see, they're not actually moving their legs here. the actual collision of how things move it just comes off of this capsule. This is your main component in here and everything else is attached to it. So that capsule is actually what drives the movement. So we just have to have their legs move and most people won't know the difference that we're cheating. So I already just pulled in my idle animation. Oh, Dave the modeler, he did these animations, he did the uh, models on this. I'm just setting up an animation blueprint for the stream here and also so I have a working version here. Um, and then a walk animation is basically all you need after that. An idle and a walk. 
we happen to have a run, so we will set that up as well. So in here, animation, blend space. Do we have 1D or 2D? I think we're only need 1D for this game. I don't see them doing anything else other than going forward and backwards. I don't see any strafing or anything like that. There's probably not any lock-ons. So we're just gonna do 1D for now. We can always change it later to be in the Z skeleton. top-down character as well. If he exists anymore. Guess not. a little interesting later but let's move on for now worst case I'll have to open up Alice <laughs> I don't remember exactly how to set up the animation like how to pull off the direction so I'll have to open up Alice for that all right continuing on for now um where we blend run horizontal axis so we want to be based off of speed minimum 100 doesn't matter we will say they move painting. I don't know much about it. Um, yeah, no idea about finger painting. Maximum access. We're going to move maximum, we'll say 600. It's up to you on how fast you want your characters to move. How many grid separations do we need? We'll say this is fine for now. I think that'll work. So you just grab your idle animation, you pull it off, you start it here, and then you just want the next one, a walk animation. I'm going to set it here. And as you see, based off the speed, 0 through 600, as you see this side 0, this side 600. Once he hits about 150, he'll start walking and just blending bit by bit in between. You can, of course, add more number of grid separations. We'll say eight. And I could, you know, have him walk starting at 75, which is actually not a bad idea. We'll do that. them to start running we'll say at 375 so I have a run you may not have that you may not need that that's what I have so so I will walk to about 75 and as they go faster they'll run all the way up to 600 selected. You can hit that button to find it. In our animation blueprint. We're going to need different states. 
new state machine. This is so much work, I'm summing it up from scratch. It's way easier if you just copy and paste. I do not know why I deleted the top-down character. Here we go, way easier. So, I am just going to copy. Oh, hello, how's it going? Copy and paste that in there. It's way faster. Okay, so is an error. We haven't created that, so we'll just create variable as an error. So we're not going to use most of this. I'm doing an animation blueprint technically from I'm copying the third one because you you can use most of what they set up it's just a little bit faster or the first person it doesn't matter really but I need one working on here and Dave he's starting his game with the zombies on it um, so we made some animations which is what I was waiting for I mean it's not the best mesh it doesn't even have a head because we're gonna use like exchangeable meshes so that some of them look different random um, but yeah, so anyways, we'll start with an idle run here. So right now we have a third person idle run speed. Let's create variable speed. Third person idle run, we want the one we created. So this one right here. So let me get rid of that, don't need that. See, skeleton. We need this. This is exactly what we're looking for. So I can push that and I'll replace it. Or you can just drag it in. Either way, it doesn't matter. I'll hit compile for now and we'll see how much it's angry at us. That's not too angry, that's good. So right now, we got nothing. So that's fine, I know why. Um, we'll continue for now. So jump start. So this is to play in animation. It's going to play this third party jump start whenever the character, whenever this turns to is true. It's going to play once. I find that to be really silly. And then when this is toward the end of the animation, it'll automatically move to jump loop. So I find this to be silly because like you're going to play an animation. You're going to have to have some code of when you push A to jump. You might as well say, play animation jump. And then at the end of that animation, you just got to tell it to loop. Which, there's a lot of reasons why you could use something like that. Um, or you could just have, you know, or if you have a more controlled game like ours, they're never going to be jumping for an indeterminate amount of time, so they're not going to need a loop. I just make the animation three seconds long and just have them loop like this for three seconds and they'll never fall for any longer than that anyways um so i'm gonna get rid of this because i don't need a jump start 
I will just play an animation. And I don't need a jump end. So this is just, yeah, I don't need a jump end. So. So we're going to create a transition. We're just going to pull this over to jump loop. Sorry, this is actually how we're going to end up doing our jump, our loop. So is in air. So we created that earlier when we had the other one. Otherwise, create one now. Just pull off of here, promote to variable, and then call it is in air or something like that. States. So that's how we are in a jump loop default state and here it is, is in air again that one get it we don't need to set it and then we're going to use not so the opposite it's a little silly worded but that's fine and then jump loop we're going to play an animation basically. I'm just going to play it over and over again. Now we don't have technically right now an animation for that so I'm just going to use this one right here. Here we go. We'll duplicate it. set the scale to 3 which will be super obvious also so we can just see when they're jumping and also I can just change the animation in here as well so we'll do that in the world here. Here we go, upper arm. It's probably better. There we go. So we'll do that. We'll key. Come to about right here. We'll key. And we'll go back up. Which is not going to loop amazing, but that's alright. And then we'll do the same thing with the other arm. And this way we at least just have something we can visually see. Visually see um, is a jump animation. Obviously you just use the Mixamo ones if you don't have one. Or quick make one if you're an animator. better than this. We'll hit apply, hit play, and that'll be our very silly in the air jumping animation. But at least we'll get to see it working. So we'll grab that, and rather than... So for me, normally I just push the button here and it replace it. Otherwise you can just grab this animation, drop it in here. We'll just plug that in, get rid of the old. We'll compile. this to loop so actually what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna create a montage you're waiting for the stream today or or animation blueprint one and how's it going by the way all right so we're gonna create a montage that's what we just did here so firstly if a blend in I'm going to leave it at 0.25, blend out, 0.25, that works for me. Actually, we'll make it a little smaller. 
this is how it blends in and out of whatever the base animation is. And then to make this loop, I'm just gonna double click right here. And when we click off of it, it'll be blue. And that means this will just be on a loop. It'll just keep going until we tell it to stop. Basically until we play a different animation here. So in this case, it's an, it'll keep looping until we get out of this uh, this state. So I'm gonna grab this and pull that in here, which it's not liking because it's a montage. So it's actually not gonna play in a montage in here. That's alright. We'll just play this over and over again until we're out of it. It's really the same thing. Um, so we're good. If we if we are in air, it'll go to jump loop. When we're not in air, we'll go back to idle. And those are the only two states we're really going to need at this point. So in the animation graph, if we go ahead and plug that in, compile, play, nope. Oh, the other, the other animation thing is not happy. Compile, let's find out what's wrong. Oh, we have yet to actually set up the other graph, the event graph. So this graph right here. Animation graph is set up well enough. We'll actually add something in a second. But the event graph. So I've already done an animation blueprint as well on, on YouTube. Uh, you can check that one out as well. Also with um, bow and arrow. This, But that one had Alice kind of set up quite a bit already. Um, you mostly can just copy and paste from a lot of the other things and replace nodes, but this at least is working it from scratch for those who need it. So at this point, we are simply going to grab everything again, because this is basically what we need, and we'll edit what we don't. So we do not need this one at all, but we do need this one. We'll pull off of there. That'll make this one real. Pinocchio will make it a real boy. Try to get pawn owner. This is basically always going to check for whoever, whatever pawn we have going, whatever character is is happening. And as long as it's valid, it'll continue on. It'll get its movement component, and it'll see is it falling. If it's falling, it'll set that the variable we had late, earlier is in air. So the second it starts falling off of a cliff or anything like that. Second, there's nothing underneath that, that capsule component. Um, it'll set it to is in air, and we'll go into that an idle animation. And then also it's checking its velocity, its speed. It's going to inspect your length, and it's adding its speed constantly to it and setting that's how fast we're moving using a 1D blend space, which is exactly what we had. Now, if you did a 2D, you also need to get a vector to do like the direction in which they're moving. Are they moving right, left, forward, up? And then of course, that's dependent on the camera too. Um, but anyways, we will do that for now. So it's angry because we created it earlier. So I'll hit compile again. It's not gonna do it. So we're just gonna delete, grab this speed, plug it back in there. And this time it's happy. It's just one of those silly things, because we all know that was fine. All right, so as you see, we're playing the idle animation now, because we're going from the state, the default state is this idle to run right here, because we're not in air. Now, if we are in air, we immediately go into our silly jump animation. That looks ridiculous, but nonetheless, that's our, that's our idle loop animation. So if they were falling, that's what they would look like. And if we're on the ground, we come back simple as that. Blending in, blending out, blending in, blending out. Um, and then the speed, the more this goes up, the more the legs start to move until they're running. And of course we can just do that actually in the game. Or we should be able to, except for, once again, while we started all this, it's because we had no animation blueprint class. So let's do that now. Animation blueprint, I don't remember what this one's called, Z Skeletal. There we go, right to our idle compile. Now we can hit play. 
So I'm using that controller, so if I move slowly, we're doing our walk, and we'll blend into our little run. Now there is no jump, so we aren't seeing that. I'll quick create one. just to create a jump we'll write all the other velocities so it's not multiplying any extra velocity it always be predictable and we'll just say 250 a quick little puff of a jump I'll just put the space bar and the bottom face button into there hit compile and there's our jump and I can do it over and over again so this guy has this person has forever jumps Running, jump. So that's that for now. Now, what if we wanted to play? An attack. Let's say an attack. Firstly, let's create an attack. Once again, you'll actually want to do this in a in a real animation um, program. You do, don't want to actually do it in, in here, and this is a terrible way of animating. But it gets us to show something for now, so we will make this person attack. Just move in some randomness. This is very useful if you need to do an edit in an animation. Um, you can just very easily get your animations edited in engine. Uh, or I use it to move root motion a lot, honestly, nowadays. So just a quick attack. Is the arms just flipping around because once again, not the not the easiest to use, not the best to use, but whatever. That'll be our, our very silly attack. Um, so we want to call that with an animation montage. I take off the word montage just because we used to have a, a limit and maybe that's still there in Windows. You put it in folder after folder after folder. So I just get things to be a little shorter in name. So I don't hit that limit. So I, I tend to just use the M portion. But say we wanted to use that attack, right? Well, we go to our blueprint. We'll do our as a light attack. And we will say play anim montage. So we want to play that montage. And you hit the button right there. Of launching animations. What's a launch animation? You mean just like a jump? <clears throat> so we're going to do the test attack. That's the one. So I'll push this arrow here. Or I could type in test attack, even though we're looking right at it because there's like no montages in this, in this, <laughs> this game yet. We'll hit compile. We'll hit play. And I'm hitting X and nothing's happening exactly as I expected. And that's because we haven't told the animation blueprint where to play montages yet. So we'll do that here. Slot. We need to create a montage slot. Plug that right into here. 
to there, leave it as default. Yeah, I'm just, just doing a, uh, a quick example on how to implement some animations. Some people are asking about how to do an animation blueprint. Um, I did an example already on YouTube, but I guess maybe it was a little difficult to follow or something. If, you know, some of the stuff I have is a little more medium, like if you've been using the engine for a little while. Um, so I'm making it kind of a little bit more beginner friendly. Um, and this project's in the beginning stage. It's my uh, co-developer. He's basically done with most of the modeling, which is what he did on Alice. He does all the modeling. He's done so much at this point that there's very little left to do. So he um, he's making his own game here. It's like old people versus zombies. So I'm setting up like how I'm going to set up the animation blueprint when I set one up for real. This isn't going to be it. I probably won't even save anything I'm doing here tonight. Just do it all over again. Um, so... Yeah, it's just uh, default slots and whatnot, and then I, then at least people can rewatch this on YouTube or whatever. I can point them to this and just say, here's here's how to do an animation blueprint, rather than trying to answer it on stream all the time. Um, so you set up a default slot, and if you look right here in our animation blueprint, once I find it, test attack. Here we go. Test attack. You'll see default group, default slot. Now, you could create multiple slots. Sometimes you want an animation just to affect a face or just maybe one arm or just some legs or, you know, maybe a different slot. You can set up different slots for this to, to work. Um, but this, this particular slot, we really only need one, um, at least for now, depending on the game. Some can use multiple. Elvis uses more than one, but she has a face slot and a body slot, and this is just so I could play different face animations dependent on that number one spot. <laughs> Kindred, how's it going, man? Uh, yeah, I appreciate it. <laughs> and yeah, that'll get you in that number one spot real quick. Um, yeah, I'm going to be streaming just for a little bit, and then like whoever I got, we'll just probably be going over to your stream if you're going to be on here later on tonight. Just going through that uh, animation blueprint thing that I said I was going to do a little bit ago. Um, so that's what, what I'm currently doing. Just to make it a little bit more beginner friendly. I already did one on YouTube, but some people couldn't follow it. Or at least one person couldn't follow it. You're off tonight? Okay, so you're just going to be stalking around randomly through through things. That'll work. I'm hoping a hippo wombat comes on so I can uh, maybe send him some, some love. He's got a really cool game. In fact, to show him some love now, I'll go ahead and put a link to his, his thing. Here we go. To his channel right here. Trailer. That'll be fun. That'll get a lot of people excited about the game too, which is nice. Yeah, um, I'll make sure to put it up on my pathetic social media following, but... Any, any way I can help, I'd love to. So I think we'll be going over to Hippo when this, when I'm done streaming. Then, if he, as long as he streams at some point tonight. Um, but yeah, with the default slot put there now, now we can actually play animations. It says the default slot, so when we push that button, we'll get an actual result this time. And there's our terrible attack animation, just to to, to prove, hey, look, it does technically work. And there's our terrible jump. We can hit attack animation, jump. You get the point. So that's that's basically all it needs to do. So all that's happening, and the only reason that you, all you need is an idle and a jump. The only reason you'll need to create a new state is a new default idle, basically that you want them to be in. I don't I don't know. I honestly I, I think I'll be on I, I'll I'll be done with this and probably. Five ten minutes, like animation blueprints aren't that difficult, and then um, I'll screw around on Alice for a little bit. I'm kind of tired. <laughs> I can already feel like just just here to to goof around a little bit, just because I said I was gonna do this, just to get it over with. But uh, if I don't see you, it was great seeing you. Thanks so much for the for the cheer. Um, but if not, I'll, I'll catch you stalking around. But the only reason you guys will need to create a new state, um, yeah, that's that's Kenji Dev. 
Um, everybody click on his name and check out his game for sure. He's making an awesome game. Uh, he streams a lot of nights off tonight, but you'll see him on tomorrow or the next night or the next night. Definitely check him out. For sure, exactly. Um, but yeah, the only reason you'll ever need an idle, I mean, a new state in your state machines, in my opinion, is there's Kindred's link right there. Go follow if you haven't already. Um, is wherever you want an animation blueprint to, an animation montage to blend back to. So you have a crouch state, or if you have, you know, a pistol, or compared to an assault rifle or a shotgun those require different default looks default states that the character is in this is where you would put those because you would play an animation and it would blend back to that default state um but that's the only reason you need to create anything in here otherwise just um otherwise you just use your animation blueprints to play your animation and it'll blend wherever you really need it to Silver Sniper, appreciate it so much. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm on here quite a bit, and thank you so much for following uh, Kindred Dev as well. It's absolutely, uh, absolutely awesome. And I like the OBS scared the hell out of you. That's a little funny. Dark Boy, how's it going on uh, on YouTube? Perfect, perfect. Yeah, we're on quite a bit, so yeah, you'll see us. If you're, if you're making any games or doing anything uh, cool, definitely share it in the chat here and everyone will check it out. I just looked at yours, I didn't see any new videos or anything, but either way. Um, but that's this is the only reason you need default states. Animation blueprints don't need to be complicated or <laughs> UE4 for life, correct? Oh, UE5 and 6, so Unreal Engine for life, yeah. Because if they make a new one, I'm jumping to that real quick. Um, but you don't need animation states for anything other than the default pose that they're going to be in. If, if you add a bunch of how to play your animations in here and everything else, honestly, I think that just gets very complicated and leads you to be in a, in a place where you have to check two blueprints just to do something. Also, more important now, you're actually doing. Um, also, more importantly, in my opinion, too, if you look at this, this is always constantly checking for the, the default owner. It's just constantly checking for it and constant 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 and constant and it seems a little unnecessary in my opinion for this to ask another blueprint questions constantly when you can just put it in the real blueprint right here just just seems a little cheaper to keep this this one where you actually want to do things you're going to learn terrain design and blueprinting next week after your sats Hop around here and get started. I I'm gonna go. I can go through some terrain stuff like right after this. Actually, if you uh, if you're gonna be here for another 15, 20 minutes, dark boy, yeah. Um, so yeah, if, if you'd like that silver, just let me know because I'll be done with this in a second. I'm gonna open up Alice, and then I'm just gonna I can I can show off how I make terrains over there. Uh, possibly even a, like a landscape material would be smart for me to show. I'm not sure I technically feel like working specifically on something tonight, so tutorials is totally I'm okay with. I think that's actually what I'd prefer, just to kind of show people how to do stuff. Um, Because, yeah, I'm not seeing much else that I could even talk about the animation blueprints at this point. You'd like that? Okay. But it'd be cool to see your game first. Yeah, see, this one's in a default state, basically. That's why I'm doing an animation blueprint, because this one technically didn't even have one. Um, it's a new game my co-developer is making. Uh, zombies, old people versus zombies, kind of a, a theme. I can show off what we have. It's not very much at this point, but... Anyway, so that's probably Animation Blueprint. Honestly, for anyone who's just coming here for the Animation Blueprint, basically, if you were on my stream and you asked me how to do an Animation Blueprint and I sent you to this video, I'm probably, this is probably the end of the video. I'm, I'm gonna goof around here for the rest of it. Um, but now I will show actually what this, this game has in it, which is not much. We'll go to the map. I'm not gonna save anything because I don't know what I did there and if I wanna change it. So what this game is, is it's going to be kind of quick multiplayer game of course we get the dark level first it's all random it's just going to be so so roguelike random things so this is where the zombies will come in and then when you're 
done with all of them on the map. It's where they'll leave. It's where you'll leave. Um, we have one room here. And there'll be a bunch of stuff in here. And it looks like this is going to be a one room version. Yep, that's it. And then you hit play again, and boom, you get a different scenario. And everything will be random. We'll get different zombies in every time. We'll get different characters and different different stats that they all have. Um, you find different loot. It's, it's kind of like Diablo, I guess, but really, really bite-sized. So everything is going to be a very tiny level. Very, very tiny. You, can, you just keep pressing play, and you go across a whole world map that you'll be clearing out. So that's all this game has at this point, honestly, is this. Now, Dave has a lot more on his his version. He's got a bunch of, like, television screens and, like, setting and, and light design and a bunch of other stuff. I just set up the blueprint code on how to get this these rooms to pop without overlapping each other. And I say rooms, we have yet to even see a two-room version. Yeah, sure enough. I may have actually turned it off recently in the code or something. Oh, here we go. There's a two room. So getting these two rooms not to overlap with each other and be random where they're assigned in the spaces. So it's not all that uh, that interesting, this one yet. Procedurally generated. Uh, randomly pre-made level. It's, it's procedurally generated, basically. So, you know, I'm, I'm basically coming up with random things of where I'm going to place the rooms, what the room would look like. It'll put a bunch of items in there, randomly pick which... which uh, characters so procedurally generated but you know it sounds more impressive because it's really just a bunch of random bulls and whatnot but i think i'm gonna end on that and just kind of walk over to alice now because she's way more entertaining and then we'll go through a terrain this one's terrain's easy This takes a lot longer to load than that Zombies one, as this Zombies one's probably 1 gig, and the uh, Alice is over 25 gigabytes. Now, when I package the game, it'll be down to 3 gigs, probably, but I just have migrated so much stuff from the m marketplace. Basically, nearly all this stuff is shoved in Alice's game because I want to make sure that I have water planes and these sound effects that I bought. Um, there was a cool material or two in the soul stuff. And all this is free from Epic. So it's kind of nice. You can just add to project. You can put into your game the open world demo. This one's really awesome. Uh, all the mountains. All this stuff. I just threw it into Alice. But it kind of bloated how large this project is now. Are you using State Machine for the character? Ignore that. Yes, I am using State Machine for the character. Even though you said to ignore it, I'm going to answer it anyways. Oh, you can't stop me. So when you package, unused assets aren't packaged. Correct. Unused assets, unused variables. It does a brilliant job of just... I, I, I guess I shouldn't promise unused variables, but I don't believe. Um, uh, but yeah, it basically does a brilliant job of saying, I'm not finding anywhere in the code where we're using this, and then it gets rid of it. So, yeah. You're, you're fine to just put too much into the engine to start with and then just don't use it. My only problem is sometimes I would put two things from two different projects and I'd end up with two versions of the exact same tree and then maybe I'd use one here and another one here and then I gotta just remember to make this one the first version so I don't end up with two in my game when I can just use one. That's all, I I kind of go through some dumb stuff but that's not too big of a deal. Let's do a terrain, shall we? Just trying to figure out where we want to do a terrain. We'll do an advanced lighting map. It looks good in here. So this one's my real game. This is the real one we're working on. Uh, this is what I've been working on for years. It's how I learned how to make games. I've just kind of destroyed this game and rebuilt it about 16 billion trillion times. get rid of some stuff here because we don't need it to be sitting here. It's Alice in Tokyo Wonderland. It's 
Alice versus with an Edo period Japan style kind of a thing. So Samurai Mad Hatter, Sumo Wrestler, Tudo Dee, Tudo Dum, Geisha Queen of Hearts, all with versus a Japanese style Alice. So we'll start with a terrain. So right in here in modes. Um, your modes may not be here, but you just gotta find it. Otherwise, just hit window, find your modes. We'll do this landscape right here. And right then and there, you're gonna see it start. It's already asking, it's already showing you what this landscape will look like just by hitting that landscape tool. Um, these squares are basically, you know, um, how tight the squares are. Is, is how smooth you can kind of get a really rounded edge. The more squares, the, the more, you know, you can get really, really smooth corners and whatnot. And that's gonna be your, your quads and your uh, overall resolution, total components, um, how many it's broken up into. So, you know, you can you can boost this up, but what for? Like, this, this looks just fine. Um, maybe, I guess, if you had a game where you, maybe you shrink almost like Alice does, and you could get really close into the details you would want to then maybe make sure that those details get really 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 tiny and small but otherwise you're you're pretty much good here um so i'm actually just gonna probably say create now i can do fill world that'll just go on basically forever but uh i'm just gonna hit create so it is going to handle its navigation we see here it's a little high that's okay so let's see we hit play we are good so it's a little higher than the zero in this world but that's completely fine so we see it already has collision on it it's probably under world static but things like when she hits the ground normally when Alice hits the ground she sparks up a bunch of dust or something and that's because of the way I've set up my materials and at this point it's not doing any of that but that's a lot to do with these layers that we don't have set up. So firstly let's give it a material. Let's talk about materials for a split second. Landscape material. So I'm going to show off my master material in my landscape. It's not terribly complicated. It could be a lot worse. Also, it's very important to note for every like line there, there's three other lines exactly like it. So, so that I have four versions of the materials I can paint in there. And you can make it more. You can, I think you can go up to 16, if not more than that at this point on landscape materials. So really, for every line of code there, it's just duplicated then three more times. So it's not that complicated. You get one, you're good. And it's really just a diffuse, which is our color, or our picture that we're drawing on it, our roughness, that's the reflection. Our bump, eh, I don't even use that that much, and our normal. Uh, so this could even be simpler than that. In mine, I always use a texture coordinate, and I multiply it by a number. This is so I can shrink the picture or make the picture larger. Some pictures, you know, basically that picture, uh, eh, you know what, why don't we just create one and I'll show, show exactly what we're talking about. That makes way more sense. So let's create a material instance off of this. Test landscape. I can spell, I promise. So we're gonna click on this. Landscape material, right here. Bam. So it's gonna go all ugly and black for a second because it doesn't know what to do. So it's super dark and super reflective, but that's okay. We'll go back to our landscape material. We get our paint. Now we have four different layers, because I got four in mine. If you created more, then it would have more. Very first one, we'll call it snow. So I've created a bunch of landscape layers. This is basically what kind of material is underneath her feet. Um, it's a little complicated. You don't need all this stuff. This is just stuff I want so that when her foot hits the ground, it makes a, I can then determine what kind of ground she hit so I can make it hit the right sound or play the right particle. It's way more complicated than it needs to be at this point. If you don't need this stuff, 
you can just kind of go from here. You don't need this at all. But I have that. So I'm going to call that snow. We'll call that brown dirt. Call that grass. We'll say this one is water. Boom. Right? So as we see, we have a default picture being drawn on the floor here. Sorry, I'll get into actual terrain stuff in a second. I'm almost done with the whole talking about the materials. So the default picture is just a white picture, honestly, looks like. Um, there is no bump map for currently, or I'm gonna ignore bump. Uh, the normal map, that's this sand texture apparently. However, as we see, it's a little big if it's gonna be a sand texture, and that's what I'm talking about. Um, the texture coordinate being multiplied here. We can shrink that by saying two, three, four, five, and now it's looking like sand, right? Now that actually looks like sand. We can see the tiling on that though. It's a little, it's a little much, but nonetheless, it, it, it looks a little bit more like sand the smaller it is, but either way. So, in that picture, it's just being set up by a picture multiplied by color. This way I can always change the color of it. I want brown sand. I can just multiply the picture, which is just a white picture. Every pixel in there is white, so um, the white pixels are one. So one multiplied by whatever color I choose is always going to be whatever color I choose because one doesn't multiply any differently. So boom, we have brown sand up in here and then normal intensity that's this normal so once again it's this picture multiplied by color and that's just getting set into our layer one and then we're just going to layer two landscape layers so we're just setting it up layer three, four, and I just do four. I can keep going from there, and each one has its own picture and its own color so that we can keep changing it. Each has its own roughness value, because I can change that. We'll skip bump as tessellation, and it's unnecessary. <laughs> and then each has their own normal, and they all need to be multiplied by these and add it back together to, to multiply. You can't just multiply it by a straight number. It won't look right. And that multiplication basically will just intensify the normal map here. So you do zero and it's all gone, which is really what's giving us our only shape at this point. So I'll put that back to one. And then our roughness, once again, that's, uh, that's how shiny things are right now. It's one, when you do zero, it gets really shiny. Really, 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 really reflective. And back to sand, which is not all that shiny. It's actually quite rough. Um, so that's our roughness. Anyways, we called this one snow though, so I'm actually gonna take the color off of here. And I'm gonna find a snow material because I have a bunch of pictures from all that free stuff they gave us all over the place. Textures, soft snow, there we go. So this is our snow material. And this ground material works just fine. What else did we do here? And then we'll paint some of this in. Number two is going to be a brown dirt. Picture so we can see them a little clearer too when I uh, start painting in here. So we'll just we'll do 
this noise texture, right? That'll that'll pretty much work. Right there. Medium waves, and then we'll just color that. Blue. That'll make it zero roughness, very reflective. And number four is our grass. if we wanted to, which we do just to show off some painting. So, tool strength, we'll turn to one, actually we'll turn it to 0.5. Brush size is way too big. Brush fall off, how, how much it falls off from the center circle. And what layer we have selected, we, we're currently on four, so that's gonna be grass. We start to paint. You know, we'll need to build here for a second. First time you put something down, it builds. It won't do this every time. And just like that, where we're pushing down with our left click, pretty simple. We're uh, we're getting grass now. In that blend, as we see right outside that circle to the outer circle, it's blending in between those snow texture and the grass one. And we can make that softer if we wanted to with more fall off. So a smaller center circle, much smaller as you see, and a lot more of a blend. Also, you know, you could always affect how, how strong the tool is and you could really blend it even less and more, whatever you wanted to do. So there's our there's our grass, our brown dirt. We will have now surround that. Once again, first time we're using it, so it takes a second. Here, actually, we're not going to have it be so far. We're going to pull that back down. Brown dirt, lots of really strong brown dirt. And then water, which is really red for some reason. That texture probably didn't come in the way I had hoped. But we'll put it in for now, then we'll, we'll change it in a second. Here's our water, as we see it's really reflective. So you can paint that in. And that tends to be how I start my levels. I build out terrain and then I paint in like the walking path. After I, I sculpt it first actually, now that I think about it. Well, I kind of do. It's kind of hard to guess on sizes. So sometimes I will paint it in because I can make the tool about the size I want the player to walk on and then I can paint in a path. And then I can sculpt around that. All right, well, let's um, change our water material. Because that's probably what's giving us a very ugly red right now. Yes, I'm way too obsessed with this. I really shouldn't be. I'll just call it this one. There we go. It's really ugly, but that's fine. <laughs> it's actually even black. That's that's it's really ugly, but that's that's fine. We'll call it. Um, 
So because I have things set up a certain way, when she jumps off of the brown dirt, she gets brown dirt. When she jumps off the grass, she gets grass. When she jumps off the snow, she gets snow. And when she jumps in water, she gets water. And that's all set up in my character blueprint. Basically when she lands, she shoots down and asks the, the terrain, hey, what kind of terrain did you just hit? What kind of material did you just hit? And then she tells which particle to push when she's walking. Every time she takes a step, she does it. Or when she jumps and lands or launches herself. That's a little more ugh, to set up. And it's useful for when I get like sounds in the game so that it all sounds different because it shouldn't sound the same. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll worry about that in a little bit. All right, now onto the actual terrain movement, like like editing the heck out of the terrain. Sculpt. This is where the fun is. Tool strength 0.5, that'll do. Actually builds real quick. So, I mean that's basically a mountain compared to Alice already. Brush fall off. We'll leave it about 0.5 and our brush size to 77. So, sculpt tool, that's the one you use the most. Just push, just let, left click and it starts building. If you hold shift, it actually goes down. And remember, we had this default mesh when we started. So, so shift is the opposite direction. Um, smooth. So let's build this, and it, it's, we'll get a real strong point there. And if we do the smooth on it. I'll kind of smooth it down compared to the other sections that I'm touching. And at this point, the sections I'm touching are one floor level, so it's going to it's going to smooth that basically down. Which another way of doing flatten, which here you pick a point and then you pull it across and you're going to get the exact same size every time. So it's making a floor basically. And I'm using it with um, some, not only with 0.5 tool strength, so you know, at the edges we're getting curves, but otherwise it could just be a, a complete square. And this has something to do with that resolution we were talking about earlier. Those triangles that we're creating. If we'd made the resolution stronger, we'd have much smaller triangles and it'd be a lot smoother ramp. Click one point, click another. Do that, raise that up, add ramp. Just like that. And you can affect the size of your ramps and everything else like that. It's a really easy way to, you know, get something quickly. And then a bunch of erosions and ways to get things to kind of blend back down. I, I'm just going to skip those and the noise. Because um, pre I pretty much can stick to mostly here. The erosion is very useful for, for mountains and sides. But it's a specific look, so a lot of people won't really need that. And then once again, because of the four different blendings, you can have four different kind of textures that are all going to blend into each other um, around these edges. And you can... You could uh, paint just the sides a bit brown and then the top of it snow and everything in here. So the terrain tool is pretty, pretty pimp, honestly. Um, I like it quite a bit. They did a good job with it, quite obviously. <laughs> yes, it'll be recorded. Um, so it'll sit, anything sits, um, sorry, I didn't check the chat there for a little bit. I'm inside that ramp, so that didn't it didn't like me for that because I'm trying to spawn inside that ramp. Um, 
so yeah it will be be recorded everything sits in the videos and the twitch for two weeks and then otherwise everything else will be on youtube and then i'll just sit there basically forever like i'm i'm too lazy to ever delete videos from my youtube so that'll just be that so i'm gonna flatten everything else back out i'm just gonna grab one of the flat areas do this and now when i hit play i won't be inside of a ramp so we can look at the thing we created and you're asking about aerial combat yeah that's not a problem we can talk about that that's a, once again another video I, I made on YouTube. Can we get up there? Yeah, we win. So all the way up. And Unreal does a great job with, so anyone worried about performance, Unreal does a great job with the, the terrain and the distance has lower um, poly counts, lower triangles, lower squares in the distance than when it does up close to you. So if I walk away from this mountain, it'll still be there, but it's just gonna take up a whole lot less polys the further and further away I get so that it it isn't so expensive. And I got a pretty heavy depth of field on it, so we can't see if it kind of morphs a little bit as I get closer, but it is becoming more detailed as I get closer up to it. Um, so don't worry about the terrain tool. It, it, it optimizes basically itself. Just, just make what you want to make to your heart's desire, and it'll be completely fine. So, yeah, not a problem, Silver. It's, it's going to be recorded for sure. Um, definitely check it out. And then that aerial combat, yeah, we'll talk about that for a second. Um, so with aerial combat, it's, you know, jump button and everything. Obviously, that kind of stuff is going to be in your game or third-person game easily. But, um... What we're basically doing is just telling an enemy to launch itself, and Alice is telling herself to launch, either at the end of a combo or whatever, and then why she doesn't immediately fall every time I push a button is because I'm telling her to launch again every time I push an attack. Launch, 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 launch. So that's that kind of small bounce she's doing, and I can show that off. Sorry, spawn on the other screen. Don't know if I covered this. Can you cover mixing textures to paint the floor with realistic grass floor or something? Yeah, yeah, that, that's in there. It's actually like half of that was just me talking about the material setup on the um, the material setup on the uh, the landscape material. Um, so that's definitely in there in that last ten minutes you missed. That that's all covered. So. That's what those ugly textures were on the floor, is me just kind of proving how you can get them there really quickly and, and how to set up a material shader. And I do also have a tutorial I did a week ago probably on how I set up my material shaders. It's really the same thing, just done in the landscape with a lot less nodes because you don't need as many nodes. And it's my it's how I set up my master material, honestly. So you basically can make the same master material I did, not like my games, that amazing looking. But it'll get you started, in my opinion. Like, any game can start with that one, and at least you can move forward. Um, where are we at? And launch cycle. So, air puff. So every time she's in the air, she's going to launch character. Now, overwrite your X and your Z. And the reason why is because you don't want... You know to be launching already and then you launch again and you go even further because the velocity multiplies or something or for her to be falling and you launch you know she's falling 600 units per second and you launch 300 she's still gonna be falling she just keeps going so if you overwrite it basically says ignore and then do this number no matter what so override it this way you're in control um, you know more more realistic physics based whatnot then don't override it but that gets very complicated, so I, I'd rather cheat any day. And I just wrote a function where I sent a number in. Uh, that number depends on which weapon she's using, how long it takes for the next swing to show up. So that's why it's a variable um, that I set up on that function. So 
air puff 700 in this case 400 in this case 600 in this case so mileage varies depending on the character and this only works in a pawn a character you have to have a, a, a character to launch um, so it won't work in a static mesh it won't work in like you know a default chess blueprint or something like that if you set up a blueprint for a dresser or a chair it won't work unless it's a character that's where you'll find your launch character otherwise you'll have to try and do like pushes and velocity and and, and force and that's a little more annoying to work with honestly um, but yeah you're gonna do that the the only other thing that's set up here is to guarantee why Alice can't float in the air forever at some point she hits a max I'll come over here. So she's starting to fall now. She won't. So it's there she didn't puff. She can't do this endlessly. This is about as high as she can get. And the reason why is I, I watched a lot of speed runs, and most of those games where people break the speed run basically is they fly right over the map and they get over to the edge. Um, and it's because they're canceling out of something and going into it. So the way I do it is this air puff won't be called um, unless she shoots a, a a line down from where she's at, straight below her. So start where she's at to her current Z minus whatever number I say. So straight below her. Her X and her Y is exact same. So exactly where she's at, just minus whatever number you put in here. And that's her end. And unless it hits something, so I pull off of here and say, did you hit something? And if the answer is false, she doesn't She doesn't even puff. She doesn't continue on with any logic. Just nothing happens. She keeps falling. But if she does hit something, then she'll, she'll launch herself a little bit. Um, so it's all world static and world dynamic. That's the only thing she'll ever walk on. That's her only floors. If she hit a, a physics body or physics actor, that would be a... Um, an enemy in my game or a pawn that'd be another Alice I don't know why there's another Alice but if she hit one of those then I'm like screw it I don't care keep falling not until you hit the floor do I have to go through all tutorials available in part or just the four hour one for developing where do we get this character mesh uh, the character mesh we cr I created in this game this is this is Alice um, you can get some character meshes to kind of get your game going um, for the question on here on YouTube, just go into your marketplace in Unreal Engine, Mixamo, and right here, all these are free. So you can use any of these characters, they'll have animations attached. You don't want to ship a game with these characters, but it'll get you going. Eventually, you're going to want to get a modeler if you don't model things yourself. And uh, you're gonna want to get someone to create characters the way you want them to be, but this will get you going, and you can at least start getting a game, uh, build something fun, which will be e easier to get a, a modeler to to come in. So she can fly forever, just at a limited height, correct? So she can puff at a limited height. So I can do this. Oh, I'll double jump. So I can do this pretty much forever, and it's a lot of fun, in fact. So she can Peter Pan it quite a bit. She can do this all day but only if I push that button to make sure she doesn't fall. And I'm a human, so eventually I'm gonna hit the ground just because I'm gonna screw up the timing, but. But yeah, so she can, she, she stays in there because it's fun. Um, I took that out for packs, just for fun. Um, I took it out, otherwise the defense had a, a break in there where you couldn't mash the defense button over and over again, but I was scared people were gonna get their butts kicked. But they had so much fun flying with Alice like that. I said, screw it, I'm leaving it in. People really enjoyed it, so it's one of those one of those things I got to find out how much pe fun people were having. So that's 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 what happened there. Um, but yeah, that that's pretty much air combat. And then I do the same thing when when she deals damage. I ask what kind of damage. How's it going, Asha? Um, good morning, right? Yeah. See, it's 11:30 uh, p.m. here. So it's nighttime for sure. Um, but I do the same thing um, hollowed with uh, hitting enemies. When I send damage to them, I tell them what kind of damage I'm sending to them. And in this case, I call it launch. I'm sending launch damage. 
and it just says, all right, now launch yourself. So it launches itself instead. So when she hits them, it, it just causes them to jump up in the air and play an animation. And it looks like, you know, of course she caused it, but it's all cheating. Everything's a cheat. And that's that. It's just two things all at once. And that's just a negative number where, where I knock them back down rather than launching up, you know, a number. I, I put a negative number in and it shoots down instead. A big negative number, so it shoots down really, really fast, just because it's kind of fun to do it that way. But yeah, I mean, it, it's it's really not that that difficult, honestly. A lot of a lot of small ideas, basically all strung together. It's it's pretty cool that you're you can kind of get away with it. You can get some base knowledge, you can kind of do just about anything, honestly, in this game. Um, I'd say a huge reason why I was even streaming tonight um, is I definitely wanted everybody to see a very cool game so i want to give some love to hippo wombat and i'm going to be up for quite a while i'm just going to do it in hippo's stream so everyone come with me over there let's go check out this very cool game if you like breath of the wild it's, it's like that so 